Welcome everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. John Mayer. Dr. Mayer's work as a psychologist has a global reach. Take a look at some of his amazing accomplishments. This is the go-to person when you have emotional problems. Someone to listen to and learn from. Now, here's Dr. Mayer. Welcome to these podcasts. I'm Dr. John Mayer. In my first episode, I'm going to lay out my successful approach to helping people with their anxiety. You'll get to know me, my experience, and my techniques. So here goes. I'm John Mayer. No, not that John Mayer. You don't want to hear me sing, and I can't play a single musical instrument. That's why I do this, and this is all I've done in my professional life. Back to a playing an instrument, something I absolutely have no talent in. Along with I can't fix your car, build you a deck, figure out electricity, or a hundred other vital jobs in our world. Hell, I couldn't even figure out how to, to do these podcasts. I had to hire someone to do that. But I'm a practicing clinical psychologist, and I am very good at that. In case you're interested, I grew up in the inner city of Chicago, had great stable parents that were lower middle class. I wasn't a trouble kid, Sure, I had tough times growing up in a major urban community, but I've been blessed with excellent mental health my entire life. Maybe all of this is why my patients praise me for my blunt, straightforward approach. I am as, as passionate about mental health as I was in my days of getting my doctorate at Northwestern University Medical School. I haven't lost that passion, energy, or idealism in all these years. That zeal led me to create this podcast. I see things in my work each day that make me cringe. This sea of weak advice floating around causes me to be on fire to give people useful tools to help them with their anxiety. If you want someone to hold your hand, recommend some coloring book, or sing Kumbaya with you, then please go somewhere else. But if you want to hear from someone that solves problems and helps people attain a happy and healthy life, stick around and I'll be tackling the wide range of aspects of anxiety on these podcasts. That's what I'm noted for, taking complex problems and breaking them down to fundamental solutions. Now let me begin to explain my approach. I will start with something we all know. Anxiety sucks. It's a bitch. But guess what? It's not going anywhere. Life will always have stresses. You may have been fooled by social media babble that you can eliminate anxiety, but that's wrong. Stress is a fact of life, and all forms of life experience stress. Picture a tiny seed in the ground. The nutrients of the soil coddle it, protect it, feed it, and then it begins to grow. Its life while under the nurturing blanket of the earth is pretty good, and it grows and grows. As it gets bigger, it faces its destiny and breaks through the topsoil, and almost instantly the stresses of being above ground work to destroy this tiny plant. Imagine in your mind's eye this tiny green sprout, just millimeters big, peeking through the ground. What happens? Rain, wind, animals, humans, trample it, smashing it back underneath the surface. But in spite of these stresses or hardships, the little plant persists and becomes a stalk. Still facing these same stresses constantly, but new resources like the sun and even now the rain help it to withstand the stresses and that stalk keeps growing and getting stronger. Sure, it could be destroyed from one great trauma, 
but it struggles to grow and it gets stronger. It has good days and it has bad days. Its stalk can now bend in high winds, and it may even withstand a shoe or two. Biologists will tell you that those stressors had a positive effect. They made our growing plant strong, strong enough for something miraculous to happen. It grows buds, and those buds face their own hardships. But they persevere because the stalk is strong and will support the buds. Then, most miraculous of all, the buds become beautiful flowers and add beauty, fragrance, and nectar into our world. And even then, those darn bees come along and steal our treasures to serve their own needs. <laughs> now, before I get emails from people blasting me for dissing the wonderful bees that we are losing in droves and are so important in our ecosystem, it was a metaphor. I love those little bastards, as long as they keep those stingers away from my skin. Now wasps, on the other hand, do they serve any greater good? Human life is no different. From the time we struggle to wiggle out of the birth canal, we face a similar journey of coping with stresses until we become beautiful flowers. Okay, back on topic. The point I'm making here is a very important one about stressing and anxiety. It's part of life, and to think you can live a life totally stress or anxiety free is BS. Any book or program that states you can live anxiety free is also BNS. And if you see something like that, run for the hills. And, like my little story about the flower, anxiety and stress has some positive benefits. It can signal that something is wrong. This reminds me of my first lecture at Northwestern. It was given by the dean of the med school, and he stunned all us idealistic, fresh-faced students by starting the lecture with the shocking statement, pain is good. We all looked at each other bewildered because we are all here to learn how to end people's pain. He went on to tease us by exaggerating his point of how pain is so useful. And as future doctors, pain is such a great tool for us. Pain, he insisted, helps us care for whatever is wrong. The pain of anxiety is the same. It tells us something is wrong. And its presence is the first step in taking care of what is wrong. Make no mistake, the something wrong is a condition we can end, fix, or eliminate. That leads me to all my basic principles. Basic principle number one, anxiety is a part of life, which leads me to principle number two. Don't fight anxiety, surrender. And let me throw in principle number three, as I was just talking about so strongly, we can fix whatever is wrong or broken in our lives. Think about this common reaction to feeling anxiety. I'm anxious, so I'm going to grit my teeth, fight this, and get rid of it. Wrong. I tell people, I'm anxious. I know what this is, and I'm going to take care of myself. This is kind of what led me to these podcasts. There are lots of wrong self-help messages out there that tout, end anxiety for good, you can live stress-free, and so on and so on. And yet they get the big B S from me. Okay, so we can't end stress. So what can we do? We can avoid it. And I can't wait for you to hear in an upcoming podcast what I have to say about how avoidance gets such a bad rap in our world. We can divert it. We can contain it, eliminate its triggers, and otherwise keep it from dominating our lives. I'll talk about this throughout these podcasts. Finally, let me talk about where anxiety comes from. All anxiety comes from one source and one source only, the unknown. Everything else that gets associated with anxiety are all subcategories of the unknown. Think about it, fears. We fear what we don't know or don't understand. Threats, the same. 
what will happen to us or, or the unknown. Performance anxiety or public speaking, the unknown of whether we will fail. Okay, failure, yep, the unknown. Death, we fear what's next, if anything. Here again, the unknown. And on and on, all are based on the fear of the unknown. Proof? What are the scariest horror movies? Not the slasher movies. Those are crime stories with jump scares. The most frightening horror movies scare us with fears of things we don't understand or we can't see. I know I write screenplays and consult on films. Now that leads me to a fundamental key to handling anxiety. As much as you can, make the unknowns in your life known. And I will maintain to you that you have the intelligence, education, life experience, including negative experiences, resources, including me, and imagination and creativity to handle anything life throws at you. These are tools that make the unknown known. My job, whether on these podcasts or in therapy, is to help you draw upon all these resources to make the unknown known. In the next episode, I'm going to defy all savvy marketing strategy and give you specific ways you can handle your anxiety instead of waiting until episode 9 and keep you coming back. See you then.